Nirajan, how does one increase faith in the Buddha? I sometimes find it sad or frustrating that I do not have absolute surety towards certain supernatural realms or experiences. As you mentioned before, doubt is one of the hindrances that prevents realization. How do I overcome this? So, some people are uh, what we call faith types. It's kind of a character. And others develop faith in past lives so that when they meet Buddhism again, they've already developed their faith. So some people have very deep faith faculty because they've already practiced and they've already investigated and they've already had some insight. So sometimes people being born into a Buddhist culture have strong faith from childhood. It's, it's not that it's just social conditioning from that lifetime. It's, it's quite often the case that they've practiced in the past and the faith faculty gets reignited. The wisdom type, actually it's usually the aversive type. Uh, so you've got, faith type is usually a greed type, not always, but greed types tend to be faith types. And uh, aversive types tend to have to rely more on wisdom. And so the ones that need to rely more on wisdom aren't necessarily going to have a deep heart-like quality of faith in the, in the Buddha. They're not going to be a, a faithy in their expression of their faith. But So I don't know if this person's a aversive type or a greed type. But um, certainly if it's wisdom or kind of logical validation, that kind of thing. I mean, just the suttas. You read the suttas. You don't need to... You don't, not just the suttas, I say read the suttas, because the logic of the Buddha and the, his incredible finesse in the way he frames his arguments or his, uh, you know, it's incredible. You can see when he talks with this person, he presents things that way. When he talks with another person, he presents them that way. And it's always logical, it's always intelligent, it's always wow, you develop a real sense of the Buddha's genius. Not only his genius, his consistency. So he's incredibly consistent in his genius, which is rare. That's why we chant all these praises to the Buddha. So read those suttas, particularly like in the Majjhima. I think the Dika and the Samyutta have more supernatural phenomena mentioned. But if you go to those like the heart suttas, you know, if it can start as that. So you don't have to take on all of the supernatural stuff. Don't deny it, though. A lot of Westerners do that. And you sometimes hear these statements, the Buddha never said that devas really existed. I'm like, what kind of Buddhism are you studying? Because, <laughs> you know, the suttas are just, the same suttas that have the Four Noble Truths and the Four Foundations of Mindfulness and the Eightfold Path, they're, they're full of yakas and devas and, and the Buddha's constantly referring to people's past lives and their destination after death. So the existence of other realms, the existence of previous lives, future lives, is all over the suttas. But the Buddha isn't saying, give all of your attention to this. The Buddha is saying, dana, sila, bhavana. The Buddha says, this forest is full of leaves. I teach two things, primarily, suffering, the causes and the path leading beyond suffering. So that's so consistent in the Theravada Sutta. And it's amazing, you've got this bookcase full of books which are consistent in their message. I don't think you can find that in any other religion. So if it's an intelligent inquiry that you need to make to deepen your conviction, go to the suttas. Another thing you can do if you're interested in opening your faith faculty is Going to Bodh Gaya is, uh, seems to have this effect on most people who go there. Is something happens on a kind of a cellular DNA bone marrow level. People kind of get it. They can feel that something's really, really special, and they they get the Buddha really existed. He was really born, and he was enlightened here. Wow! <laughs> it does affect people that way. When you went to Bogai, did it affect you that way, Miss Lee? Yeah. yeah, how about you, Peter? Yeah, the vibe. Enlightenment vibe. It's 
was really there. I, I, as you know, practiced hundreds of hours meditation under the Bodhi tree, and I love it because there's something very, very special there which enhances spiritual experience. So get yourself to Bodh Gaya for a week. Direct flights from Bangkok from October to March. I sound like a, I'm a tour guide now, so. <laughs> That's the benefit, you see. I lead a group of students, and then I got to stay an extra month. So that was great. And uh, that is genuinely helpful. But if uh, so, would be going to Ajahn Chah's Chedi on a quiet day, not on one of the days when there's 10,000 people there. Go on a quiet day and meditate in the stupa where the relics are. Most people can feel, uh, even walking into Wat Bapong or Wat Nana Chak on a quiet day, when you walk into the forest, you can feel something. Something happened here, something special. Most people get that. And so you have the confidence in the soundness of the teachings, and then you go to these places where people practice well, and it just seeps in, it gets deeper over time. So I wouldn't feel depressed about not having uh, enormous faith. You have enough faith to be here. That's quite a bit of faith. And then it's, uh, you know, it's like a creative challenge. You've got a great excuse to go to India or uh, other holy places to deepen your faith. Go and pay respects to Samarahant. 